Finding interesting and compelling landscape locations to shoot can be pretty challenging, especially if you don't know how to research them in the first place. So today I want to share with you a couple of the techniques that I know on how to research and find awesome landscape locations. Hey guys, Craig McCormick here from DestructivePixels.com where I share with you the tools, tips, tricks and techniques that I've learned and I share them with you so you can get back out there and shoot better images faster. Now as always these are just the techniques that I know for myself for researching locations but if you have any other ideas or tips that you want to share put them in the comments below, I'd love to hear what they are. So now let's start where I usually begin researching locations to shoot, 500px. I've sung the praises of 500px multiple times in the past, and for good reason. It's one of the best places in the world for photography inspiration. But for me, I almost see it as like a massive photography location database website, and it's such a cool tool and I love using it for just that. I usually start my process by searching for the name of the town or the place or the area that I'm going to be visiting. And for this example, I'm just going to use the Scottish Highlands since I've been shooting there a lot recently. From there, I always narrow down the search results to just the landscape category. And this way it filters out all the other stuff that's not really relevant to what I want to shoot. And then to organize those shots even further, I want to arrange those search results by Pulse, which is 500px's rating system as rated by its users. And this way it brings up the best of the best all the way to the top. Now the first thing I see here is a bunch of shots of the same mountain and it looks like a pretty cool place to shoot. So I'm going to open up a couple of these images in a new tab and I'm going to keep searching down on the page. And I usually keep doing this until I have about half a dozen tabs open. And then from there I will go onto each tab individually and I'll look for information to see if there's any indication about where it was shot. So you're looking for information like in the title or in the description or even in the tags used for that image. You just want to find something that gives you an indication about where that shot was taken. And as you can see, each shot has got really great titling, there's information in the descriptions, and there's even stuff in the tags as well. A few of these shots even have map information logged in them, so that's really great if you want to be able to narrow down the specific area that that picture was taken. I normally keep doing this until I have a handful of really interesting locations that I want to have a record of. And then from there, I normally throw them all into my Evernote. But that is another video for another time. I'll be honest, the bulk of my research is done on 500px. Once you find a shot you like, you can often find the area that that was shot in and then search for that area instead. And then from there, you can narrow down your search and find even more amazing locations in that area that you didn't know existed. It's a really cool tool and I often find myself going down that rabbit hole. Uh, you just have to keep a record of you know, really where you're searching because uh, if you keep doing this for long enough, you'll end up much, much further afield than your original search area. So definitely keep that in mind. Not every search is going to pull up something interesting or worth shooting, but persevere, change up your search queries from time to time, and you'll often find something worth exploring. But now that we have a couple of locations that we want to research a little bit further, let's go on to the internet's repository of things, Google. For the sake of time, let's just concentrate on one of these locations. And of course, I've had to go and pick a shot of the big mountain with the really hard to pronounce Gaelic name. So please forgive me all my Scottish friends and family who are watching this as I butcher this name for sure, but the place we want to research is Bilkala Etivmore. There, and I'm never going to say that again, we're going to keep calling it the big mountain because I'm not pronouncing that every single time, it's hard. As you can see, their search results are a treasure trove of useful information. It's clearly a big tourist spot, especially with hikers and walkers, which I am neither. There's a Wikipedia page that gives historical information about the mountain and also info on the surrounding area. There's also a hiking website that gives you not just details on how to get there, but where to park too, which is incredibly helpful. And it's actually something I've talked about in a previous video. The hiking website even gives detailed instructions along with pictures on how to climb the mountain. Very useful if you're one of those crazy people that likes to climb mountains. Yeah. One thing to consider, especially when a location is really popular with tourists like this one, is to narrow down your search results. I normally do this by tacking on the words photography or shooting at the end of it. Ironically enough, there's actual pew 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 shooting done in this area, but the first search result on the page is exactly what we're looking for. In addition to being an awesome shot of this location, the photographer is given a detailed breakdown on where to find that specific location that we saw so often with the waterfall and the big mountain in the background that we saw in our initial research phase. 
And this ties into one big thing that I really want to stress to you guys, and that's looking for photographers' websites or blogs that have been to these locations already that we want to go to. Because photographers want to share their story, they want to share their journey and what they've learned in going to making this shot. And that's exactly what we're looking for as photographers. And to jump back to 500px here for a second, look in the descriptions of the images that you're looking at to see if the photographers posted links to their blog posts on the location. Uh, that's often where you might actually find some really great information and could be the difference between abandoning the shoot or nailing that shot perfectly. One final resource that I want to share with you guys is to look at the official tourism boards of the areas that you want to shoot in. It can be a little bit tricky to find sometimes, but often just searching for the area plus the word tourism will do the trick. This is a great way of finding tons of information all in one place, especially when it comes to nature's and the outdoors. You'll almost certainly find locations that you had no idea existed. And then from there, you can search for those places in 500px and restart this process all over again. For instance, if I go on the Visit Scotland website, which is the official tourism board of Scotland, they have tons and tons of information on Scotland's stunning and unique geography. They even split it up into really convenient categories like forests and woodlands and coasts and islands. So make sure you look at tourism board websites for the places you're researching, even if it's a place you've lived in for a long time. You might be surprised what you uncover. So there we go, now you know exactly how I do the research for the locations that I shoot at. While there's something to be said for just going outside your door and exploring, doing this kind of research, while tiresome, can drastically increase your chances of having a successful photo shoot and getting another shot in your portfolio. And as I said before, if you have an idea or a tip that you want to share on finding awesome locations, please share it in the comments below. And if this is your first time here, I'd love to have you subscribe. I do weekly photography videos where I share with you the tools, tips, tricks, and techniques that I've learned. And I share them with you so you can get back out there and shoot better images faster. I also have a special video series called Vlogs where I bring a little video camera along with me when I go out to shoot my images. And you guys come along with me for the entire ride from start to finish. And that includes going to the location, scouting for shots once we're there, composing my shots, the settings I'm using, and everything else in between. I really enjoy doing them and people really seem to enjoy them too. So if that or any of the other videos sound interesting to you, please check them out. And if you want to learn more about me and my photography, head over to destructivepixels.com. Thanks very much for watching guys. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next one.